Okay. So for the first topic, it says naming the quadrant or axes of a point given its coordinates. Good morning. Good morning. So this is my first example of the day, and here we have these points here. I'm just going to list them on my paper. I'm going to briefly, quote unquote, lecture, right? <laughs> Tell you some information, and then we'll figure out what to choose. So. The options are different in each one, but I'll go over all of those options on the camera. Okay, so before we start, I have to talk about the coordinate system. It's called a rectangular coordinate system. Now, it does have that name because eventually when you get to, maybe in college algebra, but I know for sure in pre-calculus, there is a whole nother coordinate system, okay? So the first one they talk about is the rectangular coordinate system, and then later eventually what you'll talk about is the polar coordinate system. So there's two. One has squares, one has circles. <laughs> That's the big difference, okay? But for now, we're always going to concentrate on the rectangular system. So the things you need to know is first, this top <coughs> right-hand one, this quadrant here, notice that with just drawing those little lines, I've created four sections, haven't I? Yes, those four sections are called the four quadrants. The one here on the top right is quadrant one, and then it goes counterclockwise, okay? So then this one would be quadrant two, down here would be quadrant three, over here would be quadrant four, okay? This horizontal line, and to get them like vertical and horizontal people always get them backwards horizontal i think of like how the sun is coming up on the horizon right mm -hmm. and the horizon is this way right <laughs> so this one is horizontal and then up and down is going to be vertical okay the horizontal line here is the x-axis and then the vertical one is the y-axis and whenever you're given coordinates they are called what's an ordered pair which means it's, if it's in the first position, it means something specific, and the number in the second position means something else different, okay? So for our rectangular coordinate system, the first position tells us the X coordinate, and then the second position tells us the Y coordinate, okay? And typically, the way it goes is the center is zero, zero. So this point here is called the origin, and it is the point zero, zero. You always start at the origin when you're trying to plot your points, okay? Most of you have already plotted points, but still, I need to plot them in order to figure out what quadrant they're in, right? So, from here, think of a regular number line, like the ones you were graphing when you were doing the inequalities or you were graphing points, right? As you go this way, it goes in the positive direction, right? So, in this way, you're going in the positive direction. I'm just going to put a little plus sign. When I go in this direction, what numbers am I going into? Negative. The negatives. Yeah. Now for the Y, think of like a thermometer. If this were zero on the thermometer, what numbers are up? Positives or negatives? Positive. Positives. And then what numbers are below zero? Negative. Those are the negatives, okay? So just to give you an idea how to, what it looks like, right, the coordinate system. So if we look at the point zero, eight, Okay, I'm gonna take, I'll just take pink here. So for the point zero, 08, that means my X location is not going to move at all because it says move zero spots, right? But my Y location says a positive eight, which means from the origin, am I moving to the left, to the right, up or down? Up. You're going up, okay? And it would be eight, so I don't know what these numbers are. We'll just pretend they're by twos so that I can graph my point, right? <laughs> Two, four, six, eight. So then my point would be up here. So this pink dot matches that ordered pair. One dot for each ordered pair, okay? Now going the other point, I'm gonna use green here. So for this point, my X location is three, positive three. So from the center, am I going, my X value going to the right for positive or to the, ne to the left for positive? To the, right. to the right for positive. And if I do the same measurements, two, four, six, eight, I'm gonna be right here in the middle, right? 
Now I cannot put a dot there because I haven't finished the whole point yet. Okay. All I've done is say that x is 3. What else is 3? Y is 3. Y is 3. So not only do I have to move to the right 3, but I also have to move where? Up 3. Up 3. And where that lands is the point 3, 3. Okay? Now let's do another color. Let's see this blue color here. So 6 and negative 2. Which way am I going to move first from the origin? To the right. Uh, to the right, how many? 6. 6. And then what am I going to do? You're going to go down down two and since I've been going by twos I just use the first marker as negative two right okay what about the last point I'll put it in purple so I start at the you origin know, you know what's the left? Mm -hmm. and since four. these are going by twos it would be to negative four here you and then what up, direction up, up, one. up one so now I'm right here now the question was, is what quadrant or axes are these points located? Now that I have them graphed, right, I can tell you where they are. So where is the pink point? Is it in quadrant one, two, three, four, or is it on the x-axis or on the y-axis? It's on the y-axis. It's on the y-axis. Then what about three, three? The green point. Quadrant one. Mm-hmm. And then the blue point, the baby blue point, you're in quadrant four. Mm -hmm. And then finally the purple point. Quadrant two. Exactly. So you can just draw this and then plot them. You don't even have to necessarily write it down. But if you're on a test, it helps me, right? If you've drawn all the dots everywhere, and if you accidentally labeled them, at least I know you know where the points are located. You just labeled them wrong. I can give you some kind of credit, right? So it's always good to write as much as possible when you're doing the the reviews but that's pretty much it as long as you know the labels of everything and you can plot the dots then you'll be able to figure that problem out okay let me get to the next one so now these are a little bit different so I'm gonna say point A and it says the X coordinate is negative and the y coordinate is what mm -hmm. then it says point B the x coordinate is positive And the y coordinate is negative. Okay, now I'm going to go to show another just to see if they have a different situation. Ah, yes, they do. Okay, I'm going to say point C. The x coordinate is negative. And the y coordinate is zero. So I wasn't sure if it was going to give me a situation where the y coordinate was zero. So I just wanted to keep clicking on more versions. So I'm going to work with these three. They should, I should be able to figure it out with these three. So they don't tell me the coordinates. All they do is tell me what the signs are. So if I know what the signs are, I should still be able to tell them what quadrant I'm in. I just have to imagine I'm moving, right? So if I start at the origin, it says x coordinate is negative. So am I moving to the left or to the right? Left. To the left. Now I'm going to keep there. I don't know how many I'm moving to the left, but I'm moving some. Then it says, and the y coordinate is positive. So from there, would I move up or would I move down? Up. Up. And so then which quadrant am I in? Two. Quadrant two. Same thing for B, I'm gonna imagine it, right? The X coordinate is positive now. So if I start at the origin, am I moving left or right? Right. Right to the positives. And then the Y coordinate is negative. So am I moving up or down? Down. Down. And so then which quadrant am I in? Quadrant four. Mm -hmm. So you just move over however many you want to because they don't give you a specific number, right? 
but you could still figure out where the location is. This one's a little interesting, which is why I wanted to include it. It says the X coordinate is negative and the Y coordinate is zero. So if I'm here, am I moving left or right for the X coordinate? Left. It's negative, so left. Then am I moving up or down for the Y coordinate? It's zero, so that means don't move it, right? So then where do I land? On the x-axis. Correct. So then this one would be the x-axis, okay? So, so far, not too bad, right? But we need to know those basics in order to make sense of all the rest of it. So now we can get into graphing. So it just wants me to graph this, and I'm going to do another one as well, just because that one's a fraction, and I want you to know what happens when you do like a whole number as well. Hey, we'll even throw in a negative. Okay. Now there's a whole bunch of formulas, but right now... What you need to know is that number in front of x is called the slope, okay? Whenever you have an equation and it's in this form y equals, okay, the rest of it should always be able to be written as some number times x plus some other number, okay? So this here and this here would just be numbers. In my case, I don't have plus anything, right? No. So it's just a zero. Right? If I add zero, it would be invisible, right? There wouldn't be anything there. Okay? So right now, that number is just zero, which is why I don't see it. Okay? But I do have a number in the very, very front. Now, what do these numbers mean? This number is the y-intercept. That means where the dot is on the y-axis. Okay? This dot here, I have no idea why they chose m but it represents slope. And when you think of slope, think of like a ramp. It's the rise over the run. Now to make things easier on yourself, there are like four different combinations of stuff to do, but um, I usually just use two. But I guess it's worth mentioning. So if you have a positive slope, what it means is that your rise is positive and your run is going to go in a positive direction. So rise means up, right? And my run will go in a positive direction. Two positives make a positive, right? However, I could also go down and backwards. If I go down, isn't that a negative? Yeah. And if I go left, isn't that a negative? Yeah, two negatives What's a positive. negative divided by a negative? Positive. A positive. So I have two options when you have a positive slope. Usually I just like to do the first one. I always go.